Alright. This is my fourth time trying to record this. We'll see if my computer can handle it. Today we're going to be looking at the 2023 NBA Draft Class. Which is headlined by this man here. Victor Wemby Wembenyama. Number one in the French League for some team I can't pronounce. We'll call them the Mets because we just saw it right there on his chest. But first, let's look back at the past 10 years and all of the all-stars that have come from each draft class. Starting with 2013, we had Giannis, Victor Oladipo, and Gobert. Those are the three all-stars from that draft class. 2014, actually 2013, we should also mention CJ McCollum is in that draft. 2014, Joel Embiid, Zach Levine, Nikola Jokic, Julius Randle, and Andrew Wiggins. That's five from 2014. 2015 had another four with Devin Booker, Chris Stapps for Zingas, D'Angelo Russell, and Carl Anthony Towns. 2016, big kahuna right here. Seven All-Stars from 2016. Jalen Brown, Pascal Siakam, Demont Sabonis, Brendan Ingram, DeJounte Murray, and Ben Simmons. 2017, we had Bam Adebayo, Donovan Mitchell, Jason Tatum, and Jared Allen. 2018, we had just two with Luka and Trey. 2019, we had three so far, Zion Jaw and Darius Garland. 2020 was just LaMelo Ball, but we also saw Anthony Edwards and Tyrese Halliburton, among others, drafted in that class. And in the past two years, we haven't had any All-Stars yet. They haven't had the chance. But 2021, we had Jalen Green, Evan Mobley, Cade Cunningham. This past year, we had Paolo Bancaro, Jabari Smith Jr., and Keegan Murray. So keep that in mind as we watch these upcoming prospects. We'll go back to Victor Wembanyama, the consensus number one overall pick in this year's 2023 NBA draft. A true unicorn. People are saying that he is the greatest prospect of this generation. And I see no problem with that claim at all. Wembanyama is listed at 7'2", 230 pounds. He is 19 years of age, born January 4th. 2004. This is his third season playing professional basketball in the French League. I think it's the LBN or the LMB Pro A, whatever it's called there. And he's averaging 21 and 9. 21 points, 9 rebounds in 32 minutes per game. Remember, they play 40 minute ball games over there. Shooting 30% from 3, 80% or 81% from the free throw line. And as you can see, defensively, He's an absolute force. He's a rim protector as well as a scorer. With scoring being the primary thing that you're getting from Victor Wembanyama. But I mean, if you look at him play, as we've all seen the highlights, he looks like an oversized KD. His shoes are like size 19, 20, whatever they are. And he's just all over the place. Another guy who's all over the place, Scoot Henderson. Super athletic, people are calling him the second coming of Russell Westbrook, who can shoot. And he can definitely shoot, that is for sure. You'll see him pull up from mid-range, you'll see him do step backs just like that. Even if it's over the 7-2, 7-3, Victor Wembanyama. But the big thing that you'll find with Scoot Henderson is his athleticism, his explosiveness. As you can see right here, he's able to get up. He's able to move. He's definitely able to go coast to coast with the best in the NBA. Scoot being 6'2", 195, 200 pounds. He plays in the overtime elite league. He's also a freshman or would be a freshman in college basketball. And he typically plays two guards, so he's a little bit undersized, but... With that athleticism and that shooting, I don't think it's going to be that big of a problem. He's currently the second ranked player on most people's boards behind Victor Wembanyama, which I'm not sure if I agree with right now, to be honest with you. I know he's fantastic, as you'll see in these highlights, especially that crazy finish right there. 
over Wembenyama. Next up, G.G. Jackson out of South Carolina, 6'9", 210, 215 pounds, power forward. He's a little bit raw, but he's one of my favorite players to watch. He's awesome, man. 6'9", 210. For some reason, he reminds me of NBA Youngboy. No idea why, but he's just a baller. He's able to do everything. I mean, he's able to he's able to score at any literally any spot on the floor. He's able to shoot the three. He's able to take you off the dribble, mid range, post up game, finishing. He can do it all, especially with that size. He can also get up. He can also dunk on people, all that stuff. And he's got great size as a wing defender in today's NBA. Very explosive, very athletic, very quick. I think that GG Jackson could be a surprise a diamond in the rough per se if he goes a little bit lower than some of these other guys next up Grady Dick I think he's the only Caucasian player on this list he's uh the typical the typical Caucasian NBA player except for he's a little bit taller this guy's a shooter he is a shooter and it's a pretty jump shot, I'm not going to lie. It's a, it is something that you can watch on repeat all day long. But he's always in position. He's a smart player. He's active on defense. I don't think his defense is where he makes his money, but he's not bad. Where he's really going to be making his bread, though, is these three-point shots, his free throw shooting, and all that stuff. I mean, he's able to knock down threes. He's able to knock down shots with people like millimeters away from him people literally touching his face and he's also decently athletic don't get me wrong he's able to get up you'll see a couple of uh of floaters or a couple of um dunks in this highlight reel here where he uh he's able to explode a little bit but as you can see the jump shot is the jump shot is pretty much everything you're looking for and at 6'8 205 pounds he's not the easiest to stop from getting to the rack. That's for sure. Another freshman. Grady Dick. It's also worth noting that his buddy Jalen Wilson is dropping 30 points a game pretty much every night. And Jalen Wilson's jump shot is just as pure. Next up though. Amen Thompson or Amen Thompson. However you want to pronounce it. However it is pronounced. I apologize. Another baller. Probably my favorite player that I've seen so far. 6'7", 200 pounds from the Overtime Elite League. Two guard, another freshman or another would-be freshman in college basketball. He's got a wide stance as you see there, almost like a Paul Pierce type jumper, but it looks really nice when it leaves his hand. And he's also just an incredible passer. He's very good at passing. He's got great vision and he's able to just, like I've never seen somebody just whip the ball like, the, like he does. He's... Look at the velocity in some of these passes, man. I mean, crazy. Super exciting. Another exciting player. Brandon Miller. Alabama. Number 24. The small forward. 6'9", 200 pounds. Freshman for the Crimson Tide. He's been getting a ton of love, as he should. He's averaging about 20 points per game for the Alabama Crimson Tide. And I don't know if anybody really expected them to be as good as they are so far but he's been a huge reason why and he's able to get to the cup he's able to pull out from 30 feet he's able to do it all and one of the big things that you'll see as you just saw there is brandon miller follows his shot a lot like he's always following his shot and he's super slick especially for that size like it's kind of it's really hard to tell like a. Uh, like a Jason Tatum type player, you know what I mean? It's really hard to kind of close out on him with that space because if you close out too quick, he's just going to go right by you. You know what I mean? And it all looks the same when he's pulling up or when he's shot faking. You can never really tell what he's actually trying to do. But super engaged, super active player on the defensive end and just a complete bucket getter, an absolute shot maker. He's going to be one of those big, big names that when March Madness comes around, everybody just starts falling in love with and all the hype will be raining down, I'm sure, by then. I'm 
It's also worth noting though that Brandon Miller has a fellow freshman teammate. Noah Clowney, 6'10", power forward, slash center. Um, big time spot up three point shooter guy. Um, as you can see from South Dakota State, that's pretty much all this video is. <laughs> it's pretty much all just spot up three point shots. And I've seen plenty of other games with him involved in Alabama. He is a decent rim protector. He is able to um, kind of provide a an anchor force down there on defense. And he is he's also able to finish around the rim. But he's uh, his specialty is is are these uh, spot up three point jump shots, which is definitely effective definitely a a tool in today's game but just want to see him a little bit more involved outside of that i think he's going to be a great player though especially with that that size and that build being able to protect the rim being able to kind of glide to the rim and also shoot not like a not on a brandon ingram level or anything like that or not yet at least but in that same kind of realm. I mean, you're not going to see him dribbling down the court like Brandon Ingram, but he can shoot for sure. Next, Nick Smith. Very exciting player, very fun player to watch. Um, very quick. Point guard slash two guard from Arkansas. Number three. At 6'5", 185, a freshman as well. Most of these guys are, pretty much all these guys are freshmen. Super, super well. Really good passer. Really quick. Really crafty. I mean, he's, he's always in the right spot at the right time. He's always making plays. He's always seeing plays before they happen. And one of the big things that you'll see with him is his floater game is crazy. His floater game is so crazy. At the time, you don't know if he's shooting the ball or if he's throwing a lob. Like, it's just... It's very, it's very fun to watch. He can also shoot the ball, though. Don't get me wrong. He's able to take it off the dribble. He's able to put guys on skates. So, offensively, he's kind of he's kind of got it all. And defensively, don't get me wrong, he's also a good player on the defensive end. Especially in transition, he's definitely able to get the ball to people on time. And in the right spot. But I mean, yeah, the dribble, the off the dribble, pull up game, finishing, all that stuff. He's a, he's a true bucket getter, Nick Smith. However, there's another bucket getter on that team. Anthony Black, 6'7", 200 pound, point forward, slash shooting guard. Anthony Black is a play maker. Anthony Black is a... A little bit more fun for me to watch. Not saying Nick Smith isn't fantastic. I just kind of like uh, Anthony's Bla Anthony Black's game a little bit more. Partly because of his size and his athleticism. I mean, you can't really imagine him being as athletic as he is. Just looking at him. But he's, he's able to get up and dunk with the best of them. But as you can see, his three-point shooting is also very, very good. And not just his three-point shooting, his free throws and his mid-range, all of that stuff. He's a great shooter, but he's also able to yam on people. And he's able to finish around the basket with pretty much anybody there. And he's a good he's a good passer as well. Like, you'll see Anthony Black making some good lobs, making some other good reads in the transition game and everything. Next up, we got Chris Murray, Keegan Murray's brother, twin brother. Same size, same face, everything. So if the Kings draft this dude, I don't know how the hell they're going to guard the Kings because two guys are going to be run to the same twin. They're going to be like, I got this guy. No, I got that guy. Meanwhile, Keegan or Chris, whoever it is, is the other guy who's open is just standing on the other side of the court all alone. That would be funny. But Chris Murray, similar player, pretty much almost the same player as Keegan Murray. I just don't think he's as quick, to be honest with you. I don't think he's as quick with the ball um, in his hands, but he's still an excellent shooter, excellent finisher. Um, great size as well, obviously, being that kind of 6'8", 220 kind of pound range, that size range. He's a junior, a little bit older, but Keegan Murray just got drafted, and he was 22, so, and they're twins, obviously, so, 
If you're worried about Chris Murray's age, then that doesn't really make any sense. Now, now we have Keontae George out of Baylor. 6'4", 185, two guard, another freshman. And this guy is, this guy's a weapon, man. This guy's shifty as hell. This guy's quick. And not only that, he's able to make shots that are, I mean, I don't even, I don't even, I'm just going to let you guys watch because I don't even know how to describe some of the shots that he's making. He's making like fadeaways through two people with fucking guys putting a blindfold on him. I mean, it's incredible, but he's a crazy finisher as well. Not only just this little hop step move that he does, but he's also able to finish in traffic. You'll see him kind of go between slice and dice between multiple defenders and still able to finish layups which is very impressive but i mean look at this like his his shot making ability his handle is good uh not the craziest thing i've ever seen but even if it doesn't like work like look at this look how quick he is side to side man i mean that's crazy that's insane for uh for a six four two guard to be hopping around all over the place like that that's kind of nuts man but he's also able to shoot the ball. Don't get me wrong. He's not just a he's not just a finisher. He's also able to shoot the ball. Another smart player, a guy who never stops moving seems like. And he's he's going to be just uh whoever's guarding that guy is going to get their their fair share of cardio. That's for damn sure. Super exciting player. I can't wait to watch him in the March Madness tournament assuming that Baylor keeps on winning as they have so far. Jarris Walker. That's who we're looking at right now. Jarris Walker, number 25. Big ass dude. He's like LeBron size big. He's fucking massive, dude. He's 6'8", like 240, 245. From Houston, true freshman as well. Big part of their success this year. With Houston obviously being the number one team. At least they are right now i think so at least they just, they just lost a temple so who knows at this point jarris walker though huge piece of their success he is a extremely smooth player like extremely smooth i mean you think that this is just the type of guy that catches lobs and just dunks on people all day but once he gets the ball in his hand you have no idea if he's driving or if he's pulling up in your face no idea i mean it's all the same defensively you can see this he gets into the passing lanes he's obviously able to dunk with the best of them given that size but going back to what i was just saying he's just a he's a puzzle to figure out for sure for anyone who's guarding him because you'll see he's got all the moves the insides the outs the spin moves the between the legs everything i mean he's got he's got a very good handle for his size very very good handle and his shooting is impeccable his shooting is really good um really good free throw shooter and three-point shooter and as you can see i mean he's able to create shots in the mid-range just as easy as anybody we've seen so with that size and that combination of skill set that's going to be tough but lastly we got to go back to where we started when the with the french league another freshman or would-be freshman rayan or ryan rupert however you pronounce it 6'6", 185 pound shooting guard from the French League. He's only averaging 6 points per game right now, but I think that's because he's kind of just getting back into the swing of things. I don't know if he was hurt or what it was, but he only played a couple minutes the first two, first two games. Now he's playing around 20 minutes, which is more like what you'd expect. But as an 18-year-old, I mean, doing some of the things that he's doing as a professional basketball player is just incredible. I mean, you can see the handle. His handle and his shooting are the two biggest things that stood out to me watching a couple of games from the french league but he's also really quick like i mean he's a smart player obviously you can see him right here he's obviously in position for the transition bucket but he's a crafty player as well he's a quick player um don't know as much about him he's kind of more of a mystery than most of the other prospects but given the fact that he's 18 doing this I mean, you'll see some of the shots that he makes where he's just like, he's like fading away. I think it's this one right here. Like, look, I mean, uh, 
I don't know. I don't know what the hell you even do about that. Being 18 doing that in the pros, I know it's the French League. That's tough. That's tough, man. So looking at all these guys, it's like, dude, what the hell? Like, how the hell are they, all these guys in the same freaking draft class? You know what I mean? And I didn't even touch on a couple of the other guys. Like, I didn't even get to Case and Wallace. Didn't talk about Kaleo Ware. Didn't talk about Caleb Love. A lot of these guys. I mean, talked about Jalen Wilson for a second. Ricky Council, also another guy from Arkansas who's awesome. Awesome player. He's, he's probably going to be a kind of a diamond in the rough type player but there's also people like even uh, other freshmen like kyle filipowski from uh from duke the seven footer he's an absolute force and an absolute unit himself isaiah wong from miami marcus sasser from houston as well with jarris walker these guys are all guys that could definitely make some noise in the nba and that i'm definitely looking forward to watching more but going back to the past decade and all the all-stars that we've seen in the past decade from these draft classes, I don't think it's too far-fetched to imagine that this is going to be the best NBA draft class that we've seen in the past decade. I know 2016 has all those all-stars, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the best draft class, obviously, given injuries and given all-star voting and stuff. I mean, it's kind of bizarre that CJ McCollum hasn't made the all-star game yet, but we should see a couple additions to each of these years and each of these draft classes in terms of all-stars within the next couple of years, especially the past three draft classes. I'm sure types of, uh, I'm sure the types like Jalen Green and Paolo Bancaro and all those people, Evan Mobley, Kate Cunningham, will all be making the all-star team very soon, not to mention Ant, Halliburton, and plenty more. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know if all these guys are going to stink if they're going to be good or whatever, and I'll see you guys soon.